What is blockchain and how does it work? This might be a little longer video because I'm going to take time explaining each and every detail on how blockchain works. So make sure you watch till the end. If you're not subscribed to my channel, do click on the subscribe button so that you learn more useful information about blockchain and the blockchain career. So before I talk about the topic, let me introduce myself. My name is Rameshwar Amancha or people call me Ram Amancha. I'm a certified blockchain solution architect and a founder of Blockchain Experts Club where, where I'm teaching blockchain to fellow job seekers who wanted to grow in their career. In this video, you will learn what is block, how the block is generated, how the blocks are linked and how the data stored in the blockchain network. What is a block? Block is like a piece of paper. You can write anything in this paper, right? You can be a simple transaction. It could be debits, credits, or it could be simple data. You know, probably it could be artwork. You know, whether you're writing something, you're drawing something, this paper can hold any information. Similar to this paper, blockchain can hold any data. So now you know what is a block. Let me explain how the blocks are generated. I'm going to give a walkthrough on how the data is stored and what are the components of the block. A typical block consists of five components. OK, so what are those five components? So let me draw a block so that I can explain in detail. Pardon my drawing skills. So this is going to be your block. So the first component of the block is the block ID. Similar to page numbers, we have block IDs. The next component of the block is called nouns. This is called number only announced once. Then we have the data. So here you can store any data. It could be transaction. It could be some text. It could be artwork. It can be anything. Data can be anything. Followed by these two components. The, uh, the fourth component is called the previous block hash and the current block hash. I'll show you how the hash is generated. This is a simple uh, encryption 256 SHA hash algorithm. So I'm going to type something like Ram, my name. And as you can see, the hash below is keep changing. The moment I type something, whether it's a, a capital R or a small R, the hash is going to change. Even a minute detail will result a different hash. So I'm going to go back to the hash as Ram. And you can see this is my hash key. Regardless of the data, so whatever you type in here, the, the length of the hash is going to be the same. So let's go back to the example. So Ram, this is the hash is generated. And how do you decrypt it? Uh, let's go ahead and decrypt the, uh, the hash. So here there's a, a SHA 256 decrypt um, website. I'm going to give the uh, links in the description. You can also try. So I copied the uh, hash which is generated. I'm going to click on decrypt. As you can see, this hash is equal to RAM. That's how the encryption decryption work. And this particular website, it uh, decrypted the data within 0.047 seconds. So now you understood how the data is encrypted, how the data is decrypted using the HSA-256 algorithm. Now let's talk about some more characteristics of a block. In general, block can have any number of transactions or it could be empty. You know, you can just mine an empty block, but it doesn't make sense, right? Why do you want to make a, a block with this empty data? So that's going to cost you some money. And on average, a block contains anywhere between 1,200 to 2,600 transactions in the blockchain space, especially in the Ethereum. And the, the, the size of the blockchain could be anywhere between 0.8 MB to 1.6 MB. 
but in general in average if you go to blockchain.com the average block size is about 0.9 mb so that is the average size of the blockchain and an average number of transactions stored in the blockchain but as i said a block can have from zero to any number of transactions there's no restrictions it's up to you uh, of how many uh, transaction or how much data you wanted to include in the block before we talk about um, the next topic let's talk about the five components again the first component was the block id which is a sequence number now it can be from one to any number like depending on the the network the blockchain network the sequence can be increasing and the second component was nouns number only announced once so this is a simple uh, random number you now if you're a programmer there's something called math math dot random it will get you a random number so let me show you how a random number can be generated for this we'll go to google and search for random number generator As you see, Google gave a result and it has a, a random number of six with a minimum maximum of one to 10. So I'm gonna increase from 10 to, let's say, ninety-nine thousand. So when I click on generate, it's gonna give me a random number, which is 86025. This can be announced in the blockchain network. So when you're mining a block, you have to keep a nounce. Typically, this is done by the program itself. They call a, a function, something similar to math.random. It will get you the number and that will be assigned in the second section of the block. That will be a nounce. That will be referred as a nounce for that particular block. Now let's go ahead and create a block with what are the information we have so far. So block ID is generated by the sequence itself. So we're not entering any block ID here. And the nouns for this example, I'm gonna let the application generate a random number when we're going for mining. So the data is RAM and I'm gonna click on mine. So what it's doing is it's first it's create a, a random number and that's gonna be uh, called as nouns and it's gonna be allowing other nodes to guess that particular nonce. So in this example, right now, the uh, the application is mining this particular block. It's sending the data to the rest of the blocks in the network to store the data. And if you can see, now it generated a random number of 10402. So this particular nonce has to be guessed by some other validator. I'll talk about that in the, uh, the next step. So this is how a block is generated. As you can see, the hash of this particular block contains four zeros. The first four uh, digits of that particular hash has zero, 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 zero. Only when you see a, a hash with first four zeros, that's when you know this particular block is validated. In the production or live environment, instead of having this zero, 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 you might be seeing as zero X. I'll show you that uh, in, the, in the upcoming uh, sections, how uh, the live transaction is being displayed, how you can see a live transaction. Now let's learn how the blocks are linked together. The first block does not contain the, uh, the previous hash. That's why it's called Genesis block. So in this example, I'm gonna type the same data RAM as the block information, as you see, the previous hash is all zeros, which is a, a Genesis block. I'm going to mine this block and see what is announced being generated. And we have to link that to the next block. So now once the, um, the block is mined, we're going to get the nouns. So it's taking some time here. So now the block is mined and it's created a hash of this uh, unique ID and this unique id will be stored in the next block as you can see the same value being stored in the second block so now i can type anything in the second block so instead of say ram i'm going to type my full name and now this creates a new hash so i can mine this block again and this hash the second hash will go sit in the third block so that's how 
the blocks are linked the current block will always have a previous block hash so in the case of uh, block 2 block 2 has a previous hash of block 1 hash so that's how the uh, blocks are linked in the blockchain network now let's go ahead and create third block i'm going to type my full name in the third block and now mine it again as you can see block 3 has a hash of block 2 here i'm going to mine it here again and that will create a new hash for the third block and the third block hash will be stored in the fourth block now let's um, play around with the block so that you know what is the uh, advantage of blockchain and why blockchain is tamper proof let's assume uh, me or somebody some hacker wanted to change the data in the blockchain so in the first block instead of saying ram i'm going to change let's assume this as a sig digital signature or maybe some financial uh, transaction let's say my account the opening balance is of 50,000 rupees and instead of 50,000 rupees i'm going to change it to let's say uh, 50,000 or maybe instead of 50,000 i'm going to say 5 lakhs a simple data change so instead of capital ram i'm going to type small raw so as you see everything from green to red now because the chain is broken so the first block has instead of having capital ram now when i change back to capital r now the blockchain is in a good shape now similar to that one now instead of uh, having rameshwar i've changed the data in the second block now the first block is valid and the data is broken from the second and third that's why blockchain is called a tamper proof solution now you learned about how the blockchain is linked how the blocks are linked together but what is mining how the blockchain uh, has these transactions or the blocks in queue we'll talk about that with a simple explanation now let's assume a block is created with your data with your nouns with your um, hash and that block will go and sit in a transaction pool so this is where all the blocks are um, queued up for mining so that's the next process so as the uh, the, the blocks are queued up uh, the nodes with the highest computation power this is where the concept of uh, proof of work is being used in ethereum now where if you have a higher gpu where if your uh, node if your um, a server can predict or you now guess the nouns you will be winning that game so imagine there are thousands of transactions and you're picking up one transaction you have to guess the nouns and you have to alert the the rest of the group that this is the uh, the nouns and the rest of the nodes has to validate it so when this is done your chain is created you now the block is validated and you're announcing to the rest of the uh, the world that you guessed the nouns right and once that is done the entire data is being synchronized across all the nodes so this is how the blockchain data flows from the user to the network first you create your block that goes to the queue from the queue the miners pick up the blocks which are pending validation and the uh, the mining happens with the highest gpu power if you have a higher server highest gpu server you guess the number first and you announce to the rest of the world that okay this is the uh, nouns and this is the hash and when they validate they have to get a valid results when they get the valid results they'll authenticate this as a valid block and they will add it to the block and once the data is added to the chain that's when the data is synchronized across all the nodes across the world i know this is a lot of duplicate information but that's how blockchain is providing a lot of uh, security for your data as you see the data is saved in a encrypted way and yet shared across all the nodes so even if one of the node goes down the data is still safe so this is how the blockchain flow works in the ethereum now let's look at one of the real-time example where you can map whatever you learned so far in this video with a, a real example so for this we are going to go to etherscan.io where you can click on the blockchain 
view transactions. This is going to pull up all the recent transactions to the oldest transactions. So I'm going to look at one of the the most recent one. I'm clicking on this. That uh, transaction has. I just clicked on the transaction has. It's going to pull up the details of that particular transaction. Now, as you see, this is a transaction hash and the status of the, the block mining is success. And you see only seven blocked confirmed so far. I'll be refreshing this page so that you know uh, how the other blocks are copying this data in a while. Now let's talk about some more details about this transaction. This transaction happened from this user or this wallet to this wallet and this is the value of the transaction and this is a fee involved for the transaction. I know I talked about the gas fee where every transaction has a cost. So in order for you to write something in the blockchain network, you have to pay something to the network. So that is that is a gas cost here. And this is the price of the gas. And if you look at the more details, it will have what was the gas limit set. 21,000 is the ideal gas limit for any uh, ether ethereum based transactions and um, these are the additional if, if you can see here the announce is announced to the rest of the world so this particular uh, miner announced it as okay 514000 is the nouns for this particular transaction and now let me go ahead and refresh this transaction earlier it was only seven blocks confirmed now it's increased to 12 blocks now come back in again one or two minutes you'll see more and more blocks confirming that so what is happening now is each and every block is looking at this particular nouns and looking at the transaction and saying okay when they decrypt it if they are getting a, a same data they're authenticating this as a valid transaction and valid block so let's go look at one of the block information so for that again go back to transactions now let's look at the blocks so this 13218524 this is a block if you see this block has all these transactions if you see that block number is same for all these transactions now let's go and click that block and see what that block is all about now this block is created 57 sorry 56 seconds ago it has 400 transactions as i mentioned in the first steps a block can have any number of transactions right so this block had 400 transactions and this was mined by this particular uh, mining hub and the reward for mining this block is 2.7 ethers and uh, the difficulty was no this is the difficulty level set by the ethereum and this is the difficulty levels and the size of the block is about less than 2 MB and this is a gas used uh, they used almost 99.99 percent of the gas and the limit kept is about this is a limit kept for the gas and if you can see the value is almost used that's why it, the gas uses 99.99 and um, when you click on more information you can see this is a hash for that particular block and this is the previous block hash so i talked about how the blocks are linked so you can see here this this is how the blocks are linked and this is the previous block information where you can click on this in uh, particular hash and see what was the previous block is all about you can just click on that particular id and it will get you the previous block information so this 13218523 is the previous block information of this one so one five two one five sorry one three two one eight five two four is linked to one three two one eight five two three so this is how the blocks are linked and in this block there are only 16 transactions and you can see uh, the data here again here so this is how the blocks are linked and you can look at the information about a block publicly this is only on the Ethereum world. Similar way happens on the rest of the uh, platforms as well. I hope this information is very useful for you. 
for you to understand how the blocks are linked, how you can verify the data in the Ethereum world. If you really like this video, click on the like button and share it with your friends so that they can also learn about blockchain and how the blockchain works. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye.